Hey everyone, Gary the Elysium's back once again for part four of my complete CD collection. Now, in case you're wondering, part four, what? He didn't do, where's the first three parts? Well, that's because you didn't subscribe. So do me a favor, please go and hit that subscribe button. Uh, along with getting updates on every time I post a video, you'll be able to support my channel. Now, in the first three parts, we went through A's all the way to the end of F. So we're going to start with G. And as I said in my past videos, uh, everything is in alphabetical order with pop, uh, not pop, rock, hard rock, heavy metal. I guess, yeah, I guess you could say some pop rock is like the Beach Boys, stuff like that. Thrash metal, new metal, grunge, all that stuff. And then um, I have other stuff like blues, jazz and that, which we'll get towards the end. So everything is in alphabetical order and in chronological order by the way the band released the album. So we're gonna go ahead and get right into G. And uh, first two we have here with G are Peter Gabriel. We have So, his uh, classic album from 1986. And we have Shaking the Tree, this is 16 Gold Grade, kind of like a greatest hits. Then we have from the 90s, Garbage is the View album. Couple here from Jerry Garcia. This is uh, Reflections. Cats Under the Stars under the Jerry Garcia Band and Run for the Roses. And now we're going to get into my Genesis collection. I'm a big Genesis fan, especially the early Genesis with Peter Gabriel. Uh, their debut album from Genesis to Revelations. It's not, there's always a different um, cover art. So this is one I own. It's kind of shitty. Trespass. This is when they really started getting into prog. Nursery Crime, what a classic, as is this. Foxtrot. And the first album. Well, our first live album by them, Genesis Live. Here we have Selling England by The Pound. The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Last album they would do with Peter Gabriel before he would leave the band. Trick of the Tail. Wind and Wuthering. Another, uh, this is Double Live City Seconds Out featuring Peter, uh, excuse me, Phil Collins doing all the uh, vocal work of Peter Gabriel. And then we have Then There Were Three. Uh, first album they would do as a three-piece, and then Steve Hackett would lead the band. Then we're getting into the 80s Genesis, which, uh, you know, the radio-friendly stuff with Duke. This is uh, Abacab. Self-title. Invisible Touch. And uh, to get in the rest of it, we're just going to slide you over here for a better view. There you go. Uh, you guys can see, hopefully, yep, cool. Uh, we Can't Dance, not a really good album by them. This is Live, The Way We Walk, uh, Volume 1, The Shorts, don't have Volume 2. And here is Turn On Again, The Hits. And then after that, we go right to another prog band, Gentle Giant, with their debut album, and this is The Power and The Glory. Got one from Georgia Satellites, their debut album. Kind of a southern rock band that had a big hit with uh, Keep Your Hands to Yourself. Or, uh, why am I drawing a blank? Yeah, keep your hands to yourself. Uh, great album by David Gilmore. It's his first debut album. This was released between um, Animals and the Wall. It almost sounds just like a Pink Floyd album. Great. Here's About Face. And finally, I have On an Island from Gilmore. Some more 90s pop alternative. Jim Blossom's New Miserable Experience. And congratulations, I'm sorry. Then we have, this might be a uh, kind of surprise, Go-Go's. Beauty and the Beat, uh, kind of a guilty pleasure. My band, uh, the Elysium's actually covered, um, we got the beat at uh, one of our live shows that we did at the Broken Goblet. is isn't available in the CD we released, but we did cover it. Next, we got some Godsmack, their debut album. <laughs> Look at that, still got this, the, uh, the wall sticker on there. Lifetime Music Guarantee, which their lifetime didn't last as long as ours, so. Can't really do anything with that. Awake. Faceless. Four. This is uh, Good Times, Bad Times, 10 Years of Godsmack. A kind of a greatest hits with a DVD included. And this is the Oracle. Here we are, Golden Earring. This is Moontan. This is the censor cover. The original cover featured Topless Lady. This is the greatest hits by them. This is called The Continuing Story of Radar Love. Then we have Goo Goo Dolls, uh, the Superstar Car Wash. Kind of sounded like the replacements before they you know, went really poppy. 
and A Boy Named Goo from the 90s. This is the transition. Still some decent songs on here, but then you hear the uh, transition to the pop rock, which they've become famous for. Here we got my Grand Funk Railroad Collection, which I'm a big fan of Grand Funk. I love Grand Funk. It's such an underrated band, I feel. Their debut album, On Time. This is Grand Funk, the red album there. Closer to Home. Live album, one of my favorite live albums of all time. Um, you know, being that I, I'm a bass player also, I just love the sound of the bass on here. It's so loud, so crystal clear. It's amazing. Survival, kind of a weird cover there. For the guys, uh, for some reason, these guys like to be naked a lot. E Pluribus Funk. This is Phoenix. We're an American band. Caught in the act, another live album by them. Then we have Born to Die, Grand Funk Hits, which is obviously the greatest hits. And this is a uh, Grand Funk Railroad Collector Series, Capital Collector Series, kind of a greatest hits, but it's got some uh, hits that this one doesn't have. Cool compilation. Uh, the thing with is these Grand Funk uh, remasters are so hard to find that I still haven't found Shining On or some of the later stuff like Grand Funk Lives, stuff like that. All right, now we're getting into the Grateful Dead. Uh, unlike most Grateful Dead fans, I'm not a huge Deadhead. But I prefer the studio albums as opposed to live albums, which probably no one ever says. So we have their debut album, The Grateful Dead, Anthem of the Sun, Oxa Moxa, Live Dead, my favorite by then, Working Man's Dead, another classic, American Beauty. This one's simply called Grateful Dead, but a lot of us know it as uh, Skull and Bones. Or Skull and Roses, I'm sorry. Uh, Europe 72, my favorite, one of my favorite live albums of all time, and my favorite, uh, this is actually my favorite live album by Grateful Dead, by a long shot. Skull and Roses, I don't know why I said Skull and Bones. Here we have, uh, The History of Grateful Dead, Volume 1, Bear's Choice. Then we're getting the 70s, uh, stuff here. This was the follow-up to American Beauty, this is Week of the Flood. This is the greatest hit, Skeletons from the Closet. This is the first uh, Grateful Dead CD I actually ever bought, you know, to get familiar with the band. And then we have Lose for Allah, uh, Grateful Dead from the Mars Hotel, Terrapin Station. And these are a two for here. This is disc one and disc two of uh, what a long, strange trip it's been, the best of the Grateful Dead. Here we have uh, Shakedown Street, Go to Heaven, Reckoning, live album. Oh, this was a great, I feel, uh, comeback for the dead in the dark. And this one's their last studio album, which I don't think is that great at all. Built to last. And we got some live stuff here. This is two from the vault. Uh, obviously a two CD. Live collection to follow up to one from the vault. This is a compilation, the Arista Years, basically greatest hits of the Arista Years, which is the stuff they did in the 70s from Wake of the Flood on. And uh, a couple more here to finish out the dead. Fallout from the Phil Zone. Cool cover art there. It's basically a live stuff. Uh, a lot of stuff that Phil sings. Phil Lesh. This is Birth of the Dead. Basically, um, their demos and first studio sessions they, they did. There's a second disc of live stuff before they released their debut album. Uh, Rock in the Cradle, Egypt, 1978. This is a two disc with a third disc being the DVD. And then we have this one here, which is pretty cool. Sunshine Daydream. Uh, Veneta, Oregon, August 27th, 1972. So it's part of that Europe 72 tour, even though this was in the United States. This is a uh, three disc, I believe. Three CD with three sets and one DVD. Really cool stuff there. Okay, then we're getting the Great White, another band that uh, gets thrown in with that uh, the hair metal genre of the 80s, which were much more. We have Once Bitten and we have Twice Shy. Along with the greatest hits and Jack Russell, such an amazing voice. Here we have a band I really don't listen to at all anymore. But I was a fan when I was younger. When they first came out, I did collect some later stuff by them. Uh, Green Day, Dookie, Insomniac, Nimrod. I don't own Horny. I do have this uh, International Super Hits, American Idiot. This is probably the last I listen to them after this album i didn't really do anything and then 21st century breakdown i do love the track 21 guns which is the main reason i own that and we have some green river this is the remastered sub pop uh rehab doll and this is green river drives a boon rehab doll so this is on here but just 
It's cool to own. The only thing I don't like is the shape of this. I don't like when they make CD cases. It's bigger than an actual CD. Here we got a uh, Greta Van Fleet. I just recently got into them uh, when I checked out this new album, The Battle of Gardens Gate. But uh, I also grabbed From the Fires. This is their debut EP, which is decent. I don't have their first new album, just the EP. Another one of my favorite bands, which I feel is very underrated. The Guess Who, this is American Woman. This is Live at the Paramount, and I have the greatest hits. Another band where it's kind of impossible to find their albums, especially remastered. Kind of in the same vein as uh, Grand Funk Robert. And now we're getting into Guns N' Roses. This is the remastered version of uh, Appetite for Destruction, Deluxe Edition. Two discs. Uh, as I was saying before, there's my original one. I pulled out my original stuff to replace it with the remasters and make more space in here. GNR Lies. You're losing one. Use Your Illusion 2, The Spaghetti Incident, the 2 CD Live Era 87 to 93. We have a Greatest Hits there, which I really don't like at all. And Chinese Democracy, which I actually don't mind. I think it's better than a lot of people made out to be. And finally, to end the jeans, we have Otto Guthrie with Alice's Restaurant, the Thanksgiving Day classic. We always played on Thanksgiving here in Philadelphia. I'm not sure if we do it all over the world. All right, start with the H's. We have Sammy Hagar and the Wabaritas, Red Voodoo. Then I have a compilation unboxed, which uh, I think I gotta switch these out. Yeah, 94 and 99. Another good thing about making these videos, I get to check uh, how I have stuff and make sure I don't put stuff away wrong. Halford, Live Insurrection, two disc set. Features some stuff he did with Choose Priest and a lot of studios. Besides, another guilty pleasure. Very best of Hall and Oates. Put on Hall and Oates when you're drunk, and I dare you not to sing along. Hanoi Rocks, uh, Two Steps from the Move, their debut album. Here we have George Harrison, All Things Must Pass. This is a 2014 remaster. I used to own it the, uh, in that weird shaped box where the, the, the discs were in like kind of a single sleeve. And I, I, I got rid of that box and got to replace it with this. Uh, the box had colorful artwork when this is the original artwork that was on the vinyl. Uh, I just hate it the way, the, 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 you know, the size of it and the space it would take up. Cloud Nine, this is the remastered version of that. And last one from George Harrison. This is the greatest hits. The best of Dark Horse years, 1976 to 1989. Okay, let's go turn this a little bit to get a better view. Okay, a couple here, more here in the H's. We have uh, Mickey Hart from Grateful Dead. This is uh, Rolling Thunder. This is pretty cool because it has, this is from 72, but it has uh, Bob Weir on it and other guys that would play with the dead. Richie Havens, Mixed Bag, his debut album from 67. Uh, we have Heart's debut album, Dreamboat Annie, Heart Baby Lestrange, and Bad Animals. And two more here from Heart. This is a, a kind of, of a live, uh, a lot of acoustic stuff on here. This is called The Road Home. And we have Heart's Greatest Hits, Volume 1. There's the second one, which covered their 80s years. Heaven and Hell, which is obviously Black Sabbath with Dio, but they couldn't use the name Black Sabbath due to Ozzy and Sharon. So this is Heaven and Hell, uh, Neon Nights, live in Europe. Live disc, on it, you know, obviously. Helmet, Meantime, another underrated uh, heavy 90s band. Okay, now we're going to get into the Hendrix collection. Let's go pull these out. Our Experience, this is the remastered two disc with the uh, DVD inside of it, which basically is just a making of the album uh, from, you know, friends and clients, guys in the band that were talking. Bold as Love, Electric Ladyland, Band of Gypsies, of course, the classic smash hits. Uh, the last experience, I got this for a buck. This final live performance. I don't think I'd listened to it yet. I've always seen this, but always passed out, passed up on it. But when I saw it for a dollar, I had to grab it. Uh, blues, a great compilation with all Hendrix's greatest blues tracks. Covers, things like that. Here we have First Rays of a New Rising Sun. Uh, it's basically a compilation of all the stuff he put out, uh, you know, in the late 70s, after he passed, of stuff he recorded, which never made on his three studio albums. Uh, as is this one, same thing, South Saturn Delta. Yeah, this is basically like stuff like The Cry of Love and uh, all those others weird 70s stuff they put out. I, I can't remember any other names. Experience Hendrix, the best of Jimi Hendrix, another thing, one I got for a buck. BBC Sessions, Live at Woodstock, obviously it's legendary. This is the uh, two CD edition live at the Isle of Wight, which was limited edition when it first came out, and now I can only get it as a single. Live at Monterey, obviously another classic performance, as you can tell by the cover there. 
Bellies of Neptune, uh, another continuation of stuff that was recorded but never released, as is this one, People, Hell, and Angels. Yeah, as you know, I'm a big Eagles fan, as you saw earlier. Uh, so we have some Don Henley, Building the Perfect Beast, The End of Innocence. I think this is like the one CD you find at every dollar bin, every Goodwill store, <laughs> and uh, actual Miles, Don Henley's greatest hits. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Now we're getting a Hole with their debut album, Pretty in the Inside. Yeah, I, I do like Hole. I mean, I feel like there's some decent songs, even though she's a murderer. But there is some decent stuff in there, uh, especially this album here. Live Through This. This one's also decent, Celebrity Skin, and then Nobody's Daughter, the last studio album they put out. Not as good as the other stuff they did. And we're going to round out the H's here with a couple. Buddy Holly, the original Master Tapes, the Honey Drippers Volume 1. That was the only one they ever released. Uh, kind of a super group formed by Robert Plant in 1985, I believe. 1984. Hot Tuna, their debut album. And then we have Humble Pie performance, rocking the film on. All right, we're going to keep rolling along. I'm going to move this over so you guys get a better view. We're going to go right into the eyes. And starting out with the eyes, we have Billy Idol, Greatest Hits. Not a huge fan of Billy Idol, uh, but I did grab the Greatest Hits because there's a couple of these songs I like, but not enough to buy a studio album. Incubus, Make Yourself, the album that really started to put them on the map. And this one was a smash for them, Morning View. Crow Left of the Murder, and this is a two CD compilation, Monuments and Melodies. Basically, a greatest hits and some unreleased stuff on there. In Excess, Listen Like Thieves, Kick. This one's simply called X, and then of course we have their greatest hits. And this band, uh, not something I throw on a lot. I used to put it on in the summer when I was just you know late at night chilling out and you've been drinking and stuff all day, and then uh, Siren and Wine. Are in the summer days, and I have the Shepherd's Dog, and the one I really like by them, um, Woman King. I actually own on vinyl. And here we have the one by Iron Butterfly I own, and it got a Devita, the classic. And here we're getting into the Iron Maiden section, and I rebought all these in the remastered digi pack. So we have their debut album, Killers, Number of the Beast, Peace of Mind. Power Slave, Live After Death, Somewhere in Time, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, No Prayer for the Dying, Fear of the Dark. And these they did not remaster, but had two original. Uh, a real live one and a real live dead one. I think they did reissue these as like a real live dead one as a two CD set, but I have the two singles, which are originals. Then we have the Bay's Valley Years with uh, the X Factor, Virtual Eleven or X One, however you want to say it, and then Bruce's uh, amazing uh, return, Brave New World. And from the Brave New World tour, we get right into uh, Rock and Rio, Dance of Death, A Matter of Life and Death, the Final Frontier, and their last studio album they put out. The Book of Souls, Double Disc Studio album. Now, I'm not a big fan of, uh, I mean, I am a big fan of live music, but Iron Maiden, I feel like they put a live album out every time they do a tour, so I don't have everything, or every time they do an album, excuse me, and tour, yeah, so I don't have, like, everything that they released live. Uh, I probably will get made in 88 because that's a decent tour, but, like, they, they just did um, the Book of Souls tour live, and then a couple months ago, they put out Live in Mexico City or something, which I feel like is a little unnecessary to have all that. And last one for I, this is a, a bootleg, it's a beautiful day, their album's just really tough to find, but it's a pretty decent bootleg and I got it for free, so, can't complain. Okay, we're getting right to the J's now, get through some of these pretty quick, we got Joe Jackson with Look Sharp, Mick Jagger, Got Us in the Doorway, James Gang, Rise Again, Joe Walsh's band obviously, Jane's Addiction, they're uh, I don't want to say the debut album because it's basically a live album. Uh, this is the, their, basically their debut studio album. Nothing Shocking. And the follow-up, uh, Ritual de lo Habitual. Then we have Kettle Whistle. And finally, Strays. Then we have Jefferson Airplane. 
surrealistic pillow. I don't have Jefferson Airplane takes off because I'm just a big fan of Grace. Enter Bathing at Baxter's. It's your 60s psychedelia at the best. Crown of Creation. Volunteers. This is uh, live at the Fillmore East. And this is a compilation, Jefferson Starship, but when they just want to be called Starship. Greatest Hits, 10 Years and Change, 1971 and 1991. I know it's technically Starship, but it's under the Jefferson Airplane moniker, so I just keep it there. Uh, we have Jet, Get Born. I thought this album was pretty decent when it came out, but didn't really hold up after that. And uh, knowing I'm a prog fan, knowing, obviously I'm going to have a lot of Jethro Tull, which we're going to get to now. Stand Up. I love this was, but I still haven't found it remastered, which I'm waiting to get for a decent price. Benefit. Obviously, they're classic Aqualung. Thick as a brick. Passion Play. War Child. Too old to rock and roll, too young to die. Song from the Wood. Stormwatch. Original Masters. This is basically a uh, greatest hits kind of. But as you can see, some stuff I need to have all the remastered versions, other stuff um, which isn't so easy to find, I just grab whatever I can, with, like as you saw there with the Jethro Tull, and uh, let me get some more in the J's here, there's a couple more Jethro Tull down here, Crest of a Knave, the album that uh, beat out Injustice for All, for the Grammy, 20 Years of Jethro Tull, I thought this was a Grace Hits compilation, so I held off, but it's actually uh from the box set so there's some rare stuff on there this is rock island really not a good album by them uh, this is a live one a little light music and then finally i got the uh, greatest hits the very best of jethro toll the best of the greatest hits they put out uh joan jet bad reputation i love rock and roll and just the greatest hits this is like a five dollar walmart cd but it's still decent not a big fan of Billy Joel, but I do have some of the stuff. I have The Stranger, his classic album, his other classic album, 52nd Street, Greatest Hits Volume 1 and 2, and Greatest Hits Volume 3. Uh, here we got uh, the Elton John collection. Big fan of Elton John. We have his self-titled sophomore album, Tumbleweed Connection. Probably my favorite. Well, it's not my favorite by him, but I really do like that album. It's probably my second favorite. Man, Man Across the Water. Uh, but this is my favorite by Elton Honky Chanteau. Don't Shoot Me, I'm on the Piano Player. Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. Cat the Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Caribou. Greatest Hits. This is the first Greatest Hits you would do. And we have Greatest Hits Volume 2 and Greatest Hits Volume 3. Now, for me, there's really nothing else you did um, after Caribou that's worth getting. So that's why I have a greatest hits to cover some of the songs I like from there. So then we have Janis Joplin, her debut solo album. I got the old Cosmic Blues again, Mama. Pearl. And this one's uh, 18 Essential Songs. Uh, good compilation. It's got some unreleased stuff on there and obviously some of the studio tracks. Uh, Journey. I only got stuff with Steve Perry. So Infinity. Evolution. Departure. Captured. I always like the way they're... Uh, they had these one named titles of their albums and they kind of like similar to each other. Um, we have Escape, Frontiers, and all the, all the artwork's kind of similar also. Raised on Radio, obviously the greatest hits, which I think everyone owns. Trial by Fire, last studio album they would do with Steve Perry. And final two to round this out, uh, Joy Division, Closer, and Permanent, Joy Division 95. This is kind of a compilation greatest hits. So yeah, uh, coming up next is Judas Priest, but I'm going to hold off so this video is not too long until next video. So we'll get right into Judas Priest and that'll be part five. So, you know, stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button so you can get an update as soon as I post that. Everyone, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.